Hi guys, I'm back in my shade. Today it's a bit of a tutorial. I often get asked how do I make the wax burners for when I'm cooking. Right, what you're gonna need is toilet roll tubes or kitchen roll tubes and you need paper. What I like to use is, is kitchen roll paper. You know, I'm always wiping the dog's paws when he comes in from a walk, so that's why I have loads of that. You need candle wax. You can go to places like Ikea and buy these small tea light candles and they're reasonably priced. What I tend to do is, I wait until after Christmas, just everything's reduced and you can usually get things at a much lower price. Just move the metal outer, drop it in. And these, it's a simple case of using a chisel, an old chisel or an old knife. Because once you start messing with paraffin wax, it's poisonous. You could never use the pot again, you know, for eating or drinking out of. It's contaminated. So this is what I use every year to make me wax burners and just break, break them up. It's actually quite difficult to, oh, there we go. These small tea light candles are just easy. Come, off, come away no bother, chuck them in there. And when you've broken up enough wax, you put them on the stove, but you put it in a another, a bigger pot with a bit of water in, because uh, you've got more control over the heat. If you put, if you put the pot directly onto a, onto a flame, it gets too hot and you risk the, the, the wax, you know, bursting into flames. I might have put a bit too much water in that uh, container, it's overflowing. And you can use any paper, you know, as long as it burns, it hasn't got any chemicals on, on it, uh, no brown stuff, it's going to be hygienic. Remember you're going to be cooking with them, and if it's giving off a lot of toxic, toxic smoke or, or bad smells, it's no good. There you go, and Devin use no, that's got brown on it, unless you know what it is. I think that's probably gravy or something like that. And that's what you don't want, guys. Because the wax wasn't melting quick enough, I put it directly onto the onto the stove without beating the pot of water. And it just showed you how quickly it got hot and gave off smoke and it set off me smoke alarm. So it's a, that was a good a good thing to show you is on not what to do basically. Although I've got my wax melted quickly, it's uh, it can be a little bit dangerous and you've got to watch, if you're doing it that way, you've got to watch it like a hawk. So what I'll do now is put my glove on because it's absolutely hot. It's a little bit messy so you want bits of paper on your trays, use metal trays or any tray I suppose, but protect your kitchen bench or your work surfaces. I'm filling these onto metal trays with a, a layer of paper. Just makes it a lot easier for cleaning later. The wicks from the tea lights are just all melted at the bottom and it could be removed afterwards. It's pointless removing them, or well, you can remove them beforehand, but it's more hard work. And all you do is you just go around just filling them up. If the wax starts to run out the bottom, just stop, go to the next one, start filling that. And then when they're, they've dried or the wax is set, turn them upside down and put a bit more on the other side. But have a little bit of paper shown because like I mentioned before, this one, I use too much wax, not enough paper. And you can see it's difficult. I would have to you see, I can't even get it's. I can't even find the fuse. That one there's a good example. One I made a while back. Plenty of paper, so it's got a, a good fuse underneath. The, the max, the, the wax is melted all the way through. It's not too much wax in because too much wax. And when it does start to melt, it just runs out. If there's not much paper holding it, if it's just all wax, it melts and just runs away into the ground and you've lost it. 
you've got to have a good amount of paper in there as well and it's a trial and error see how quick see how quickly that lit let's blow that out whereas this one look at that smoldering the wax is melting but that's no you know it's not lighting so that's what that's a good example there of not what to do another good method to make in the wax burners is to use cardboard rolled up just cut lengths of cardboard cut them into strips And all you do is roll them up. Anything that burns, basically, that can hold the wax till it dries. And just a bit of duct tape. Just wrap it to stop it from unraveling. Any wax that's left can just be reheated later and used again. That just been switched off for the last 15 minutes it's already starting to harden so you know that's knee rush guys you know you've got all day to do it if you want but they could probably do a little bit more wax in them and I've got a few more to make up you know guys anything can be used as long as it's combustible holds the wax long enough till it sets and acts like a fuse so that's it that's how i make my wax burners um i hope it's given you a good idea on how to make them yourself you, you may find your own way of doing it but this is a start this is how i do it it's not necessarily the best way or the right way it's how i do it all i, all I can really say is just be careful when it comes to naked flame and powerful wax because once it catches fire, it's a bit like the old-fashioned chip pan fires. When the fat catches catches hold, it is very dangerous and it's difficult to put out. And if you panic and that pot spills and goes all over, you've basically got a fire in your house or in your shed. So do it preferably outside in an open space. Uh, I'm not going to be responsible for anybody that has a fire if they're not taking the precautions because it is very dangerous. This. So just bear that in mind hot melted wax is very dangerous so right i'm not gonna preach thank you for watching and hopefully the next video you'll see i'll be out in the woods where i prefer to be actually get out and do a bit of wild camping you know it makes sense you know it makes sense